morning and welcome to Live Encore Live. I'm your host, Robin Bell. And on today's show, we're going to find out what the future holds for medical wearable devices. And we're going to talk about the Avery Dennison sustainability efforts to reduce operational and supply chain environmental impact. We've got a couple of great guests with us today. And I think you're really going to enjoy this discussion. We're going to have a Q&A at the end of the broadcast, but you can send those questions to us throughout the broadcast and we'll address them a little later. And please post those questions in the Q&A tab on your meeting toolbar and not in chat. Originally, Mike Colorossi was going to join us for this discussion, but he wasn't able to be here today. But we are, however, in luck because taking his place is Wyatt Larson, director of Avery Dennison Enterprise ESG. Wyatt's going to give us an overview that focuses on the work the Avery Dennison team is doing to deliver innovations that advance the circular economy and reduce the environmental impact across all aspects of the businesses. Let's get started by welcoming Miguel Solivan, Avery Dennison Medical Marketing Manager, who's going to give us an update regarding what the business is seeing in the medical adhesive segment, including the growth of wearable devices. So this is the first time that we've had a team member from the Avery Dennison Medical Division joining us, and I think it's pretty exciting. Miguel, welcome to Encore Live. Thanks, Rob, and, and, and really excited to be here. And uh, it is a first for our medical business to, to be um, joining Encore Live. Um, I know you and I have had some banter going back and forth around football, so I'm going to put it out there. Um, it, there's no. going to be another. There's going to be another first this year. I'm, I'm predicting that the Browns will win the Super Bowl. So uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that, and you can uh, you can hold me to that one. Okay, well, uh, if Mike Colorosi was here, we'd have a, a, a very interesting discussion. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and get started with, uh, let's have uh, some information about your background. And then uh, if you wouldn't mind telling us about your role with Avery Dennison Medical. Absolutely. So um, Miguel Solivan, I'm currently the marketing manager for our medical business. I've been with Avery Dennison for 32 years. Um, 32 years ago, I started out in operations and I've held several roles uh, in operations in our coding and finishing departments. I've led teams in, in multiple sites um, over multiple businesses, including um, our, our performance tapes business, automotive, um, building, building and construction, and, and, and medical as well. Um, so 18 years ago, uh, I then moved on to the marketing and product management side of our business and held various roles there as well. Um, and, um, you know, and, and during that time, um, worked uh, with many industry leaders um, across the medical uh, space um, to uh, develop new and exciting products um, and uh, really collaborate on um, some, some really innovative uh, solutions. So, um, and happy to be here. Uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, discussion. Um, so medical pressure sensitive adhesives, they might be a new topic for some of our viewers. Would you give us a brief introduction to Avery Dennison Medical? Yes. So Avery Dennison Medical is a business unit within our performance tapes business. Um, it, and the, the tapes business is headquartered in um, the the. the um, the Cleveland area, as well as uh, we have a performance stamps division and a medical site in Turnout, Belgium, as well. Um, our mission uh, at the end of the day is to offer adhesives and materials that are in uh, use in patient care throughout the world. Uh, we're a customer focused organization that value, truly values building a lasting relationships um, together. Um, so, continue to develop products that, at the end of the day, our focus is improving patient care. Um, we're a material science, um, have a material science expertise and vert vertically integrated in adhesives, meaning that we do have um, a unique capability in that we have uh, one of our Avery divisions um, is, a, is an adhesive division that we work closely with to develop um, a new um, it, it, and exciting adhesives. We are, uh, have, Avery, from an Avery Dennison perspective, we have over 200 sites. 
Um, on the medical side, there are four sites uh, around the world, um, man manufacturing sites, two in Northeast Ohio, one in Turnout, Belgium, and one in Longford, Ireland. Those sites are compliant with either ISO 13485 uh, or ISO 9, 9001, and um, we've been serving the medical industry for, for nearly for uh, 50 years. Well, there's a lot of uh, a lot of credibility in what you all are doing here. Um, Avery Dennison Medical, it serves several business segments. Would you tell us more about these segments and how they impact our viewers? Absolutely. Great question, Robin. Um, before I touch on the, the segments, so let me dive in a little bit to our, our capabilities and, and our uh, product offering. So much like other Avery De Den Denison divisions, um, we offer roll goods and tapes in different constructions, such as a single coated, double coated um, cell phone and transfer tapes. Um, within those constructions, they're intended for um, either uh, bonding, tie layers, so bonding several different substrates together within the segments that you see on the screen, or direct skin contact. Our direct skin contact adhesives are compliant with um, uh, ISO 10993 for cytotoxicity, irritation, or sensitization. Um, and there are seven, seven different adhesive technologies used across these segments. Acrylics, uh, which are acrylic adhesives, which are the workhorse of adhesives, ideal for skin contact, safe, uh, modifiable, um, and, and again, uh, one that's used across e each of the segments that you see. Hydrocolloid adhesives, which are rubber adhesives with absorptive properties used in wound care and ostomy, um, as well as uh, Atasa adhesives, which are Avery patented adhesives, and a, 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 an example of our uh, innovative um, uh, solutions to the market, which is a combination of the adhesive properties of an acrylic and absorptive properties of a hydrocolloid. Uh, silicon gels that are used primarily in wound care um, that um, are uh, intended to remove softly from or easy gently from skin. Um, silicon PSAs that are used in um, diagnostics due to their inert um, optical clarity. Um, in nature, uh, and then additives within adhesive. So we have unique capability to add those types of, or um, um, uh, micro or uh, uh, different types of additives into adhesives as well. Um, today, what we'd like to focus on is the wearable segment. That's that. All of this is very exciting, and, and you were talking about the silicone. I know some of the adhesives with the silicone adhesive. That's a that's a game changer for elderly, particularly with sensitive skin. Um, the wearables, this is a whole new world. It's, it's fascinating. The wearable devices, uh, how, is this, these, how are these segments organized? Well, as you mentioned, yes, where the wearable segment is a, a, a rapidly growing segment. Um, yeah, there's some studies out there that say they were growing at 20, 25%, double digits year over year. Um, we've segmented uh, into uh, two different sub-segments, um, the first being diagnostics. I mean, and let, let me just take a step back. And what is a wearable device? Um, and the wearable device is a, um, a, a, a device that's worn on the body for an extended period of time that has some sort of functionality to it, um, whether it's providing a treatment uh, or whether it's monitoring vital signs, for example. Um, those sub-segments sub include diagnostics and therapeutic. On the diagnostic side, you can see basic uh, devices that uh, monitor basic uh, vital signs, such as um, blood pressure, temperature, uh, sleep, um, blood gl glucose, um, which is you know, a rising area of need um, for, uh, for our users, um, fetal monitoring. And, and neuro monitoring as well. So these are just some examples of the types of diagnostic applications that are out there um, and that, um, that, that leverage the adhesives that we supply um, to the market. On the therapeutic side, pain management, whether that's electro um, stimulation, uh, whether that's a, a drug treatment um, to, to, to help with, uh, with pain, rehabilitation, respiratory, um, uh, drug delivery and infusion. Um, so when you, again, talking about administering, um, invasively administering, uh, uh, non-invasively administering uh, insulin. Um, so these are all um, the types of devices that um, exist in the market 
and 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 uh, devices that are utilizing our materials. Um, now, one other point I wanted to make, if, if I can, yeah, is that as, as you can imagine, these devices um, comes in, in in different shapes and sizes and form factors. Um, they adhere to the skin. The skin is a very dynamic um, uh, su surface. Um, it's our largest breathing organ, um, and it's very challenging substrate uh, to adhere to due to due to uh, contoured skin, um, due to uh, hair growth, uh, oils that um, are, are used to or that, that grow that that uh, migrate to the skin um, to protect and moisturize, uh, perspiration. Uh, not to mention our, our skin regenerates every 14 or so days. So it's a very, very challenging substrate um, to adhere to uh, and, and, and one that we have um, unique uh, expertise in. Yeah, and, and, and to that, uh, for example, with the elderly for wound, uh, for, for adhesion uh, to the skin, having a, having a bandage that they can take off and put back on, take off and put back on, and you need an adhesive that's going to be able to do that. So this is, this is really important. Um, this is an important discussion we're having here. So Avery Dennison Medical is a leader in medical uh, wearable adhesives. Would you tell us about uh, how the adhesive is incorporated into a medical device and how it bonds? Yeah, so bonding to sub different substrates um, is again, a very challenging um, task and one that our, our customers um, come to us uh, every day uh, for solution, to provide solutions to. So an adhesive must um, be effective across many different uh, uh, types of substrates, as I mentioned, must be compliant with medical standards in ISO 10993 as it pertains to skin uh, safety and efficacy. And then optimization of device functionality. As, as you saw in, in the previous slide, there's a, a lot of uh, varying different types of functionality that we need to account for. The illustration is, a, I think, a good example of how we partner with our converters and our OEMs. Um, to add value to to their design and their device, as you can see, and there's a is, there's a level of complexity uh, that and, and variability that that's associated with the device, um, and and a converter has a unique capability that you know when we collaborate and partner together early on in development processes, um, you know we can address a lot of the the, the design inputs early on, um, so that we can provide solutions. To varying um, to, to different components within a device. For example, an overpatch, as you can see in the illustration, an overpatch um, that has a, a, an adhesive that uh, and, a, and a carrier uh, that protects, secures uh, the device to a to a user. Um, the, the device level can can have that come into play and uh, can contain inlays and electronics and batteries and hydrogels, uh, which all need to be factored into that design and that device and those adhesives that 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 we recommend. The tie layer, um, which are typically double coated adhesives uh, that bond uh, the device to the skin layer adhesive permanently um, to secure throughout the wear of that um, device, and then the and then the skin layer. Again, um, I, I mentioned. Um, you know, just a little bit about some of the characteristics associated with the skin um, that need to be accounted for. But to your point, um, there are different types of skin. There are di different types of users. There's um, uh, infants and, and more senior people and healthy adults and um, placement on the body um, is very different. A device, as you see there, is it, it may require different adhesive um, as it pertains to, you know, a flat surface on the chest or the back of the arm or the, or the back area versus um, the skin is very different on the abdomen, um, where it's got to be a little bit more contoured in some cases, and it has to um, uh, have um, some durability as it relates to torque in your body. Um, on the arm, the 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 you know uh, when you know we could be uh, a healthy adult that's going to the gym five times a week, and, and that durability that device needs to uh, sustain through uh, the in intended wear time. I mentioned wear time. These devices um, could adhere to the body for, or to the user for 24 hours to seven to 14 uh, or 21 days, for example. Um, uh, 
uh, different types of environments that need to be accounted for. I mentioned perspiration and oil, skin oils and those sort of things. So very different from if you're in Southern Texas um, or if you're in, you Alaska. Know, up in, in or Alaska. Yeah, absolutely. And and then the last is, you know, is it is it chronic wear or or um, is it is it for short term wear? Some uh, some users, um, you know, have to um, to wear these types of devices, um, you know, for the rest of their lives. And we take that very seriously um, in, in ensuring that the device is of uh, our, our part. You know, we contribute our contri contribution to this device is, you know, safe. It's of quality. Um, and that um, it, it, it meets uh, the, the user's intended need. Yeah. Well, that sort of leads me to my last question for you. If our viewers want to connect to Avery Denison Medical, how would they do this? Now, there's several ways. Um, you can contact uh, our, um, our account managers uh, through our website, medical.averydenison.com. Um, you can um, also contact um, myself at miguel.sullivan.com or .averydenison.com. Um, and, and there are also um, ways that you can learn more about our business, specifically on the wearable side. Um, we have just recently launched um, our Wearables Adhesive Learning Center, Center, which is an educational tool. Um, for engineers um, uh, and, 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 and those, those de design folks that are working in this space that want to learn more about um, some of the challenges is, uh, within the wearable device. For example, there are seven different topics with 26, 26 different unique design challenges associated with a wearable device. Um, that, that's a, there's a lot of education there that we, um, we hope that you can leverage. Um, and then contact us um, to help provide solutions for. Well, thank you so much. This has really been a pleasure talking to you and uh, it's been a great learning experience um, about the Avery Denison Medical Division. Thanks for spending time with us. Um, Miguel will be back with us when we have our Q&A at the end of the broadcast. And as a reminder, you can send those questions anytime during the broadcast. Just post those questions in the Q&A tab on your meeting toolbar, please. With us now is Wyeth Larson, Director of Avery Dennison Enterprise ESG. Why is going to give us an overview of the work the Avery Dennison team is doing to deliver innovations and sustainable solutions. Today is a day of firsts here at Encore Live. This is also your first visit on Encore Live, Wyeth. It's great to have you here with us. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks, Robin. Well, let's just jump jump right in by having you tell us about yourself and your role with Avery Dennison. Uh, we could talk football. I'm sure you've got your opinion too. <laughs> let's learn about your background and your role. Yeah, well, I'm I'm a I'm a Pac two fan, I guess. So it's much more okay. depressing than than uh, the rest. At Ohio of State and Michigan, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, great to be here. Like I said, uh, I joined Avery about three years ago, um, and I came out of the tech industry before that. Um, I've spent coming up on 15 years basically building and managing sustainability, ESG, and uh, program management groups, teams, programs. Um, so everything from carbon reporting to supply chain labor rights, uh, reporting management and and particularly regulatory reporting management. Um, so Avery Dennison was kind of an early company in separating out ESG and sustainability from our as as distinct functions. Um, I run our ESG program office and um, we work in very close partnership with the sustainability teams across the enterprise. Okay, let's move on to um... Let's talk about uh, sustainability. So many companies, large and small around the world, they're in the process of crafting or have created sustainability goals for their organizations to reduce waste and to improve the environment, among other key initiatives. Avery Dennison is no exception. Would you walk us through the Avery Dennison 2030 sustainability goals and also how each of these goals are measured. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, we think good measurable goals are, are critical to keeping us on track, demonstrating progress and to transparency that, that our customers can see that we continue to progress. Uh, we actually have two sets of active sustainability goals right now, one ending in 2025 and then the, the one that you see here ending in 2030. They're fairly analogous, but we wanted to make sure that we kept uh, making things more aspirational for ourselves as we move along that journey. So one thing to call out is 2025 is next year. Uh, we've got about 16 months to, to finish those goals out. And for the most part, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, so in this slide, you can see that we have uh, three sustainability goals. And within each of those, we have several metrics and we track progress against uh, those goals using the metrics within. Okay, yeah, I can see that. It's a good slide. Um, so you've you've talked about the three sustainability goals. Um, what are those goals? Can we elaborate a little bit on those goals? Yep. Yeah. So on the left side there, the uh, deliver innovations that advance the circular economy. For both 2025 and 2030, um, this is really all about sustainable products, what we provide to our customers and how that uh, is either more sustainable in its construction or drive sustainability for our customers or, or the product end users. Uh, we have an internal product standard called Sustainable Advantage. Some of you may be familiar with that. Um, and within that, we have uh, different ways that we classify bio-based, recycled, or other sustainable material. Uh, our 2025 goal really targets how much of our revenue comes from that Sustainable Advantage product portfolio to try to drive more and more of, of what we sell to have those sustainable attributes we find so important. The 2030 goal use a sustainable advantage standard, but also looks at how we enable circularity. So uh, using adhesives, uh, labels, what Avery Dennison makes can, if not done correctly, really hinder circularity within the value chain, but if done correctly, can be a, a great enabler of it. And so we want to make sure that we're innovating in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, if we look at this from a, a tapes perspective, um, there's a uh, Things that could go into EV batteries that reduce end product weight uh, or reduce VOCs in the manufacturing process. Same thing with um, things that, that enable building envelope, building efficiency. Uh, that's the sort of thing that could get a product moved into that sustainable advantage category if it meets enough of the sustainability criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about sustainable products and tracking the Avery Dennison carbon footprint. So what is the third goal? Well, that was actually all just goal one. It tells you how big these goals are, um, but I'll, I can go through goal two and three here. So goal two is uh, reducing the environmental impact of our operations and supply chain. So that's where we track our company carbon footprint, how much water we use, uh, landfill free waste goals that we have. Um, and that's really about us operating in a way that's environmentally sound. Um, we think that's important and a value add for our customers, even though the metrics we're tracking are very much Avery Dennison operations there. And the last is uh, making a positive social impact and en enhancing the livelihood of people and communities. We think you have to match environmental performance with social responsibility. So we actually release a whole separate social responsibility report each year, in addition to our ESG download and the sustainability um, information in our annual report. Uh, the key metrics within here are on employee engagement, looking at DEI, like women in management, and making sure that we are getting that holistic perspective that really helps a company thrive. Um, as well as how the Avery Dennison Foundation donates and engages with the community and employees volunteering at those Avery Dennison Foundation engagements. Mm -hmm. so this is all pretty wonderful, um, what we're talking about here. Carbon footprint and circular uh, economy going hand in hand, of course. Um, recently, Avery Dennison released a new video with a teaser, teaser what if? Let's go ahead and play that video and then we can uh, discuss it afterwards. What if scanning your clothes could tell you their story? Or your sneakers could confirm their authenticity? What if your sushi could assure you of its freshness? Or you could track ingredients from farm to fork? What if your football shirt made you more than just a fan? 
Or your morning coffee lets you tip the farmer directly. What if your car could reflect your style, as well as the sun from your face? What if your windows could save energy? And all of this got the thumbs up from the biggest voices on climate. What if a label could alert you when food is going bad, assure you a vaccine is safe, and stop clothing from going to landfill, and enable plastic to be recycled instead of becoming ocean waste? What if? What if we told you one company can help make all of this possible? Okay, we've, we've come to the end of the video. I'll give you a synopsis, um, which, is, which is really talking about how Avery Dennison is innovating with sustainability across the value chain in mind. And, and that's everything from ensuring that we can track garments from the initial textile factory that's making the raw material, through the garment being created, worn, used, and then end of life and bring it back to a recycled state, something like that. Same thing with food. If you know the day that your head of lettuce was picked off the field and it gets to the grocery store, it's a lot easier to know what's fresh and manage that. And instead of just doing a simple first in, first out, you can actually manage by first picked, first out. Um, so there's there's lots of great applications. That's sort of on the, on the digital traceability side, but also looking at materials and, and how we continue to innovate to drive sustainability for all of our customers. What are the innovative solutions that Avery Jenison champions that would help our viewers advance the sustainability initiatives within their own uh, organizations? Yep. Yeah, so we really see four key areas where the, the connection of physical and digital can help drive sustainability uh, and, and as well as uh, cost effective or cost and efficiency for our customers. So uh, those four areas are up here. The first one, um, optimizing labor and supply chain efficiency. This is really about data. You know, supply chains uh, over the years have relied on, on sort of increasingly antiquated systems and where we have where we have data around uh, time, volume, and location of materials throughout the value chain, we can really make sure that items show up at the right place at the right time to match demand. Um, and that that goes for for durable as well as uh, perishable. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about reducing waste, uh, we, the the area I want to focus on there is food. We've done some research as a company looking into waste throughout industries and value chains. And I invite you to look at those reports um, called, uh, there's one called the Missing Billions. Um, and the other one, the name escapes me at the moment. But um, when we look at food, a huge amount gets thrown away really at, at sort of the end point, but before it gets to the consumer, whether that's the grocery store or a fast casual restaurant. And if we simply use digitally enabled labeling to help manage that, that could be a massive reduction in the amount of food waste. That's cost savings for those end customers and that's environmental savings for, uh, for those end customers and, and everybody in that sense. We've talked a little bit already about um, advancing sustainability, circularity, and transparency, both in terms of uh, you know how we're innovating, what goes into our products, and how that product inter interacts with the end substrate that it ends up on. Um, but if we think about connecting physical and digital labels here, conveying that information throughout the value chain, you know, a label is at a really interesting point in the value chain where it's able to convey information both through written text, but also if you use a QR code or RFID or NFC, those types of things can carry with them endless amounts of digital information that's very, very valuable when looking at managing product life cycle and recyclability. Um, you know, the European Union has a, a uh, directive coming in in several years called the Digital Product Passport. And this is really about managing that full product life cycle. And we, we will be able to help enable that for, for our customers. That so, digital product passport is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and and we're, uh, we're already piloting that with some customers. Um, and, and so that's, we're looking forward to being a partner for companies as they, as they need solutions in that space. So the, the last one here is helping brands and consumers better connect. And, and uh, I, I'm going to throw a curveball at the host here, but um, since we talked football earlier, I'm, I'm actually going to. Sports. 
we're going to talk sports. So I'm actually going to pull this out. And this was this is a patch that we did with the 49ers earlier this year, or I guess it was last year, um, with Joe Montana. And there's a there's an NFC chip in here embedded within the patch. So that when you touch your phone to this, it actually kicks you to a specific website. So you could have this on your 49ers jersey and engage with, I think it was, I think it was his whiskey brand. Um, but, uh, that's, you know, that's a really key way that, um, that we can help our customers engage their customers with product in, in really interactive and new innovative ways. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, it opens up uh, so many, so much potential and so many, uh, so many possibilities. Uh, well, this, this, that was that was awesome. So, how can our viewers learn more about Avery Dennis and sustainability uh, initiatives? You mentioned reports, for example. Yeah, yeah. So all of that stuff is public. Um, the The easiest place is our website, which is esg.averydennison.com, and we've got our ESG download. If you really are into some fact heavy dry reading, I suggest that. Uh, or our annual report, which uh, opens up with uh, several pages of information about innovation and products, and that's much more interesting reading. Um, and then uh, there's a, you're always welcome to reach out to, to me or to our teams. Um, we have sustainability teams within the business, and so I'm sure Miguel could connect you um, as well uh, if you want to talk to somebody specifically about something in the in the tape space. Yeah. Well... This has been an absolute pleasure having you with us, Why? Thank you for uh, punt hitting, if you will. <laughs> for my How do you like that, right? See what I did there? Um, uh, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. All right, we're just about ready to move into the Q&A. Um, Wyatt's gonna stay with us. We'll bring uh, Miguel back. But before we do, there's still time to submit a question. If you have a question, post it now in the Q&A on the meeting toolbar. I wanna let you know that Encore Live is gonna be back in December for our annual year end broadcast. So do check your email inbox for the announcement about the upcoming web. So that will be coming pretty soon here. Okay, our guests are back with us for our viewer Q&A. Why don't we get started with our first question to, all right, this one's to you, Wyatt. Okay, so you just went, so I guess they've got that question. So we're just starting in our sustainability effort. What is most important for us to focus on? That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I think the, the advice that I've given before, and I think is relevant here, is find good partners. Um, you know, one of the most challenging aspects of a sustainability program is start, is getting that traction and starting to make um, changes. And, and it's important to set measurable goals and all those things. But if you find good partners now, companies that are working on sustainability, then you get to leverage all of the work that they're doing, even as you continue to build your program. So that's the place that I encourage companies to start um, and, and then build the governance internally as well. I, I don't want to say lose track of that, but um, if driving easy action is just choosing the right supply chain partners. Like Avery Dennison. Like um, Avery Dennison. <laughs> for example, since our sustainability practices are, are pretty awesome, that's a good way to start. You're already, uh, by partnering with us, you're already practicing some sustainability uh, yeah practices. Yeah, okay. I, could, I could give an example there if that's helpful. All right, Jay, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, if we talk about carbon, the fact Avery Dennison is actively working to reduce our carbon footprint means that you as our customer get to benefit from that. When you calculate your company's carbon footprint, that is included because of the goods that we sell you. So, you know, it, it truly is even numerically calculating it, there's a benefit by working with a company like Avery Dennison. Exactly. Okay, we've got one. Okay, this one's for you, Miguel. How do I go about specifying an adhesive for a medical customer? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think at the beginning, it's understanding the design inputs, right? As I mentioned, there's so much variability when it comes, so many variables within a device. Um, and I think it's understanding those um the, 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 those inputs, design inputs early on in the process, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding the substrates, understanding the, the user, the intended, uh, the, the application 
um, understanding the wear time, those those characteristics that I mentioned. It's so it's imperative that we understand that early on. I mentioned seven different adhesive technologies. Within those technologies are um, many different types of formulations um, that we can choose from. On the wearable side of our business, um, we've we've um, developed a specific wearables product portfolio. Uh, those are 13 products that have been tested um, um, to, to different types of um, uh, methods um, that are intended for specific types of devices. I mentioned wear time, and we've got um, products that are um, non-wovens and films um, that are, are laminated to adhesives that are uh, used for seven, or again, seven, up to seven days, up to 14 days, up to 28 days. You know, right. so understanding those design inputs leads us to the, the, the appropriate solution for that device. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's do another question. Oh, 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 this one's also for you, Miguel. If we want to prospect medical device manufacturers, how important is the collaboration between converters, device manufacturers, and material suppliers? That's a really good question. It, it, it is. And, um, you know, we've seen several times um, examples of the adhesive in the device being an afterthought, right? When you, you go back to that layered device that we saw, there's a lot of complexity, a lot of components that go into that, electronics and, and inlays and, you know, and, and really capturing the data um, or administering the treatment is, is really the focus at the design manufacturers from their point of view. Um, we've seen many times you get down um, the development um, cycle and, and, and you're, you're ready to launch a product and, and didn't account for one of those variables that I mentioned um, it, because the adhesive was not in, totally intended for that use case. I mean, then that development cycle has to start all over. That's loss of time, that's loss of resources, that's loss of money, yeah. maybe uh, revenue, maybe uh, you missed a, a product launch. So collaboration is early on in the design phase is so important uh, so that we can work together um, to understand um, those those inputs and recommend the appropriate he, uh, adhesive products for that intended use case. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've got a question. Uh, this one is for you, YF. Can a company benefit in their sustainability practices just by having a relationship with a company like Avery Dennison. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, that's tied to sort of what we said with that that first question. That there's a lot of um, there's a lot of benefit that a company can get through that, either just the purchasing or through some partnership. Um, so Miguel talked about you know looking at at making sure that things are innovated uh, and and use case aligned. And I think that you can do the same thing from a sustainability perspective is, is partnering with a company like Avery Dennison to help find a, a lower carbon or lower environmental impact solution. But also just simply by being a customer of ours, you get to benefit from all of the work that we're doing in our in our value chain and in our, in our innovation and in our uh, internal environmental practices. And I just saw this question um, going to what we were talking about earlier. Why, if they wanted to, uh, they wanted to know where would you recommend they go for more info or guidance on what the industry is doing regarding sustainability reports and 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 so yep. on that we talked about. Yeah, I mean, I I think it depends on on what you're looking for. Um, if, if you look broadly, Europe is, is typically leading the way from a regulatory approach, but also from a market expectation. Um, I, I think any sustainability person would know I'd be remiss if I didn't say that. Um, in my experience, um, typically what we see become expectation or law in Europe generally starts to follow globally within a few years. And so it's a, it's a good place to look and get an idea of what might be coming down the pipe. Um, and you can look at industry groups, um, Oftentimes, they offer guidance groups like uh, PSTC or TLMI, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and then companies that publish sustainability reports. Look at your top suppliers uh, or your top customers. That's another really good spot to go. 
go and uh, and read through their sustainability reports, look at their goals, and it can help you figure out what you might want to do to align. Okay, um, I just saw this. If you want to view the what if video, go to averydennison.com forward slash making possible. Okay, Great. so that's averydennison.com forward slash making possible. And uh, with that, we've got one question, time for one more question. Um, this one's for you, Miguel. And uh, again, it's looking for uh, guidance and recommendation. Is there any guidance on where we can go to guide medical customers through the adhesive selection process? Yeah, there are actually um, two tools on our website. One is a product finder that um, takes you through a journey through our entire product portfolio. Um, that's segmented by construction or market segment um, that can lead you to a potential product. Um, there are also um, some, some options uh, once you get to that uh, selection of a product or you're interested in a product uh, to either request a sample um, or to connect with one of our account uh, managers. And then I'll go back to the um, wearables adhesive learning center and we, we've we've talked to so many people within the industry and design engineers and um, developers that 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 um, are really going through a journey of understanding um, all the variability within a device um, and 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 due to those conversations we created this tool um, on that's on our website that can um, help, again, help developers as they go through the journey, understanding uh, what are the, some of the challenges that they need to identify, um, and, then, and then some of the solutions that can be um, offered for those as well. And then how to connect with us uh, at Avery Denison Medical so that we can help um, also guide through and ensure that um, we're specking in the appropriate adhesive um, for the uh, intended use case. I need. You guys, this has been incredible. It's going to open up all kinds of possibilities for our viewers. Thank you so much for this today. And thank you to all of you. That's it for this, this episode, this webisode of Encore Live. From all of us at Encore Live, thank you for joining us today. We are looking forward to seeing you in December.